All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this last tab at the end of the line, and this is our environments. Now, I swapped out our asset to this shoe I designed a while back, and basically the reason why I did that is I wanted to kind of show the effects of the different environments on it. So, you open this up, and you, know, you get a bunch of different HDRI lighting examples here. Some of them are abstract, some of them are from photographs. What the heck are these? How do you use them? Now, like, Traditionally, you would want to, you know, take an image from over here, drag it onto your object and, and go from there. But the thing about these is these are not actually affecting your actual model. Instead, what they're doing is they're affecting the environment around it. And so I'm going to show you what that means a little bit. So, so basically, whenever you're designing a look development on an object, you well, really, whenever you're making materials of any kind, they don't exist in a bubble without lights, right? So lighting influences materials, materials influence lighting. They work hand in hand. That's always been the case. That always will be. The color of the light will influence the color of the object. The intensity of the light will make it look different. Um, how small the light source is is going to be how uh, sharp the reflections are, things like that. So we have to be very aware of the lighting that's being used in our scene as we're building this out. So whenever you're building a prop, a general rule is that you want to find a neutral light rig, which is why these types of light rigs exist. So and you can see I'm, just, I'm adding these to the scene by dragging and dropping them in. Some of them are softer, some of them have some more value, some of them have like a light area and a dark area, but none of them have color to them. And that's really, really important. Um, and that's because you don't want to be polluting the colors that you're putting on your object with colored lights because it will affect the look of it. Um, like if you added in like this, uh, this panorama, you'll see that all of a sudden now it's a little bit warmer lighting where this cooler lighting will make the colors look a little bit cooler. This, you know, Studio 80's horror flick will completely change your perception of this. So. It's just something to be aware of. Like this is a really good example of how this completely thwarts and modifies the colors on the on the object. So whenever you're you're working, I tend to use this low contrast uh, front one just to kind of create some shadowing effects on it that way. Um, it doesn't really do much good to talk about these in isolation without talking about the display settings as well. So that's all the way up over here in the upper right hand corner. It looks like a computer monitor with a little gear icon in it. So I click this, you're gonna get this panel opened up. And what this is, is it's gonna give you some environment settings. So the same environment maps are here um, in the uh, environment map pull down. So you can select them here as well. Um, environment opacity is how much you can see it in the background. This will be, uh, let me do this with the panorama. Um, and now this is how much is being blurred out in the background. And it doesn't really change the, the lighting on it. It just changes our perception of it. Um, this rotation thing will rotate it around. Uh, you can also do that, you've seen me do that a bunch, by just holding down the shift and right mouse button, and I can just line it back and forth, and that'll rotate it around too, same setting. Um, and then you'll either align it with the world or with the camera. So you can also do it this way, where I can rotate the object around. Look, let's say I wanted to see underneath it. You can see that the, the, work, that the lighting doesn't rotate when I rotate that around too. You can also enable shadows. Um, the shadowing will take an extra second to calculate. And then you can see it kind of locks in until I let go and then it softens. And you can just change out the shadow opacity if you need to. Uh, and then the camera stuff down here, you can change out the focal length, um, the lens, and then, and then you've got some post effects down here that you can add in too. So if I wanted to add in uh, depth of field, I could do that. Um, you have color corrections, tone mapping, you add some glares, vignettes, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then down here we've got subsurface scattering and um, it, these are all just like the individual viewport things. You can have, uh, if you want to look at the wireframe mesh, that's down here as well. Um, and you just have all, all of your different display options uh, show up in, in this menu as well. You can show a grid on the ground plane if you need to. Um, blah, blah, blah. And then you can, yeah, you can turn up the grid opacity. I can also make this red if we need to. Awesome move along the Z or the Y axis. But basically I wanted to just mention these, uh, these environments over here and just know that as you are building these out, you're definitely going to want to be, just, just be aware a little bit of the, the lighting that's going on so that you're not, um, uh, you're not adjusting 
your lighting and your shot without knowing it uh, and, 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 and adjusting the ultimate look of your object. So that's it. That's it for, uh, for environments. And after this, we're going to move on to some more advanced topics.